Bonjour to everyone, welcome back to the Magpie Channel TV. Happy Friday, people. Hope you're having a good one and uh, gonna enjoy this weekend. <laughs> I might be ruined by the football tomorrow night, or it could be glorified by the football tomorrow night if we manage to pull off an FA Cup upset. Now, we're not going to this game, listen, it's not like we're bloody Hereford, uh, any non league team Salford or anything, can't it? Man City. We've got to remember we're Premier League, you know. We're top four last year, not so good this year. But we still can't compete with these. It's not game over. I know it's very hard to believe it because City are so good. Uh, but we're going to get in all the preview and that soon. Obviously, it's Paddy's Day this weekend, so I'll be enjoying a few Guinnesses. Shout out all the Irish Mags out there. I was actually on the Irish Mags podcast last week, so go head over to their YouTube channel and check it out if you fancy that. Good lads over there and everyone else that's going to be celebrating this weekend. Have a good one. But we're going to start this video off. Obviously, a little bit of reaction towards Eddie Howe's press conference in a bit, but as the title suggests... We're going to lead with Amanda Stavely saying sorry to Brucey. Aye, so she's came out with this apology now on your screen. She wants to clarify comments she made at ex Newcastle manager Steve Bruce. Last week when she was doing a press conference, little talk sort of thing, event over there in Saudi Arabia, the Bloomberg Sports Day thing. And she said in that conference, we had a coach that didn't want to come to work. Obviously referring to Steve Bruce there before they sacked him and replaced him with Eddie Howe. Since then, she's obviously got backlash, you know, the likes of talk sport and everyone else picked up on it. I did a video on it. But the you know, talk sport were, were hammering up for her. You're seeing it was crass and all that and people weren't happy with it, obviously. The man himself, Steve Bruce, wasn't happy with it, you'd imagine. So is this now a case that just came out and apologised and said this because brucey has got his lawyers involved? Is there going to be some legal action there? Has he said to her, you know, come on, that's defamation type of thing or, or what? Who knows? Apparently Luke Edwards from The Telegraph is now saying that Steve Bruce is happy for the, for the issue to be sorted now. It's done. She's apologised. He's fine with it. Let's move on. So that's what I'm going to do as well, to be fair. But that's the news there that today, Stavely has retracted that statement on Bruce not wanting to come to work and she's apologised for it. So either she feels guilty, Bruce's lawyers have got involved, Bruce made a rang Stavely, crying into his bacon sony, not happy about it. Either way, she's retracted it and uh, that's all I'm going to say on it as well. That's what Stavely's put, Bruce's happy to move on, we've got more things to talk about now. Let's talk Man City away. It is the FA Cup quarterfinal on Saturday night, oh my days. I'm still good, man, because imagine this weekend. We could have been going to St. James Park to play a quarter-final for a chance to get to Wembley in the semis against Coventry at home, against Leicester at home. Man, you, Liverpool, I would have took all of them. Even Man City at home. Obviously, we got the worst possible draw. Honestly, man, just... The cup draws this season have just been off the charts, haven't they? What the hell's going on? Man City away. We did the live reaction for it. And it was, it's shocking, but it's not shocking because it's just the, the way it's went for us all year, hasn't it? But uh, we've got the worst possible draw. We've got the best team in the world, the treble winners, who are going to do it again. They're in course to do it again. They're in the title race. They've just, literally the second the Champions League draw has been done where well, I started this video, and they've drawn Real Madrid. What a tie that is. I would say to Pep, you know, listen, Pep, you don't need the FA Cup again. Focus on the Champions League. Took you that long to win one. Why not get back to back? Yeah, go on. And if you beat Real Madrid, you'll definitely be the favourites if you're not already. Focus on that game. Just think about Real Madrid being about. You don't need to worry about little old Newcastle and the Newcastle Rock go bang! Snapped them by surprise. Sneaky one to Isaac. But I, I think for me, we know what Man City are going to be like. We know they're a world-class team. Eddie Howe has been praising them non-stop all day long, saying Pep's the best ever to do it. Best man driver, is what Eddie Howe said this morning. And it's hard not to argue with his style of play and the trophies he's won and everything else. Yes, there's that old argument, you know, could he do it at really Newcastle? Would be nice to see, eh? You know, could he do it at somewhere where there isn't just loads of cash on offer? But, aye, he's got lots of things to think about, Pep Guardiola. How strong is he going to go? He's got the title race. Got, look, he's got a national parade, to be fair. That doesn't help us. I think if they had a game in a few days' time or next week, that may have suited us a bit more. But, obviously, he's got a week or two to prepare for. Is it Liverpool next? Or they just played Liverpool? Who they got next? Arsenal, I think it is. I've got Arsenal next, so massive, massive game in the title race, that one. Then, like I've just said, Real Madrid in the Champions League quarterfinals. We know from yesterday that Kevin De Bruyne is going to be missing for Manchester City, which big blow for them, big bonus for us. 
obviously there's just another matter of 11 other world-class players to deal with now. But De Bruyne being out is, is honestly a big thing for us because he did single-handedly win the game for Manchester City at St. James Park back in January when he came off the bench with about 20 minutes to go, assisted Oscar Bob, scored himself, unreal, like <laughs> ridiculous. But he's been withdrawn from the Belgium squad, so that means he's going to miss this game as well. He is scheduled to be out for this one with a hamstring issue. So that is a plus for us, obviously a, a big plus for us as well is the availability of Anthony Gordon. Eddie Howe said he trained yesterday, he's going to train today, and an availability selection will be made whether he can travel to Manchester for the game in the morning. He'll definitely be there, whether he's on the bench or not, but Anthony Gordon will be available, and that's a huge relief, obviously, and well done to Gordon. He got that England call-up yesterday, did a little YouTube show on that, but buzzing for Gordon. He himself has said, you know, it's a dream come true and everything, and he's thoroughly deserved it. And what I liked was Gareth Southgate actually saying he loves Anthony Gordon's work ethic, so that's... That's amazing to hear, isn't it? Because when we signed him, he was meant to be this bad boy, rebel, horrible reputation, bad attitude, he stinks. And uh, I met him. He doesn't stink. He smells quite nice, actually. But you know, he's obviously a sound bloke. Do you know what I mean? He's obviously sound, working hard. His mindset is there. He's really switched on. He's a really mature lad for his age, 23. He's, he's in the game, man. He is sports. He is in the game. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he wants to achieve. And he's on his way to doing it. 10 goals, 7 assists for Newcastle this season has got him that deserved England call-up. Some of the bits of injury news then is that unfortunately Nick Pope isn't going to be back until the end of April. It's pretty much him ruled out for the season. My God, what a nightmare that is. So Pope's out until the end of April. We're hoping he's going to be back end of this month, start of April, with that uh, shoulder issue he's had for months and months now. So that's a, that's a big shame, obviously, with some crucial games coming up. It would be nice to have him back. Harvey Barnes isn't going to be fit to travel to the Etihad tomorrow, but he will hopefully be back for West Ham United on the 30th of this month at home. Lunchtime kickoff and that race for Europe. What else was there? Sean Longstaff. This is what else there was. Big news, this one. Thought that was a spider or something there. Don't know what it was. Uh, Sean Longstaff, the big one for me is what Eddie Howe is saying. So what Eddie Howe said was the following. I don't know why I've dragged this on so long. I'm losing the plot. Friday morning, just want the weekend to be here. So, Eddie Howe has said that Sean Longstaff has been carrying a knock for a while now and he's had injections recently. Yet he's still been playing 90 minutes. Still can't even get subbed off. He's injured and we won't even sub him off. That's a bizarre one, Eddie, and that's not going to help the critics. I'll be honest with you. It really isn't. And a lot of people on social media when the Newcastle United official account put this information out there saying, ah, Sean's been playing through a lot of pain, you know, he's been needing injections. Why the hell have he been picking him? He's not good enough when he's fully fit, Eddie, for the majority of the time. So when he's absolutely knackered needing injections to get through games and you keep him on for the entirety of the match, why? That makes no sense to me. Again, it's that loyalty thing. It's, it's one thing that's got to be criticised, Freddie Howe. I think that's a really bad choice. You've got Miley there. Anderson's back now. Joe White, just play him instead. Honestly, because Longstaff's been that bad, and if he's carrying a knock, it's a bit of an excuse for him, to be fair. Eddie Howe takes some of that blame for me. I think that's a bizarre decision to continue playing an injured, out-of-form Sean Longstaff. Very strange, that one. Back to Manchester City, though, and it's not just Kevin De Bruyne that's missing. Jack Grealish and Edison are also out. City's number one is out. Their main keeper for a good few weeks, so he will be replaced by Ortega, who did play in the League Cup clash back in September, was it? The start of the season? Feels like ages ago now. What a long old hog this season has been. Honestly, it really has with these Champions League trips and everything, I've been honest. It's been brilliant, but my God, I'm looking forward to the summer. I'm looking forward to the Euros, to be fair, with Gordon. So aye, um, Ortega steps in. We obviously scored past them, beat them 1-0. And this is the confidence that Newcastle have got to take, but this is why if it was at St. James, it would be totally different, man. Under the lights... Because the record at the Etihad is so tough. We haven't won there since 2014-15 season in the League Cup. Rolando Ahrens and Musa Sissoko. Rolando Ahrens, I wonder what he's doing these days. Is he still playing like Greece or Turkey or India or something? I don't know what he's doing. Probably working in the Indians more than uh, playing over there. But I, Newcastle, they're, they're really struggled at the Etihad. Most teams do. Obviously, Manchester City are an unbelievable team. But listen, main goalkeeper's out. Best player's out in De Bruyne, I've still got Phil Ford and Ellen Holland and everyone else, Bernardo Silva and the list goes on. John Stones having an amazing season. Bit of a help that they've got a couple of those injuries, I think. And obviously, if Gordon's fit, he's acting fair. Defence is where it's at though for Newcastle. We've got to toughen up at the back. We really have. And I didn't think I'd say that after last season, 
how solid we were, but Botman's been atrocious. Will he come out? You know, talked about it on the podcast on Tuesday night. Could you move Bain to centre back, bring in Matty Target, bring in Lewis Hall? Obviously, Tino will play out right back because Trippier's injured. Uh, could you bring in Jamal Lascelles? There's options there for me to maybe change it up because that defence has been so bad. So it'll be interesting to see what we did. Eddie Howe said he's going to go all out attack. You know, we are going to not all out attack. So everybody says we will attack, we will go for it. We'll have to go for it. You know what I mean? It has to be decided on the night this game. Extra time and penalties. So there's no replays at this stage of the FA Cup. So we do have to have some bravery. I think how we do it is we'll play like Spurs do. You know, Spurs got a great record against Man City. They catch them on the breaks with the likes of Hoiming Sun. So I think we need to do that. Gordon on the break, Murphy or Almiron on the break, square to Isaac, defend for your lives, hopefully get through to us, I mean. Listen, I'm not expecting anything after Chelsea put three passes. I'm expecting City to win by five or six. But with a couple of injuries, it's the hope that kills you, isn't it? Eh? Saturday is nearly here. The sun's just about shining. I'm starting to feel a bit positive on this one. I'm starting to maybe get a bit deluded as well. Definitely. But, uh, you know, there's that part of FA Cup, magic of it, cup upset, can we do it, can we go there, imagine if we did it, because semi-final at Wembley would be amazing, that's why again the draw stinks, that we just couldn't get a decent draw and get there, but I, um, I'm going to say, probably rather deludedly, deludedly, is that even a word, probably not, uh, one of these, Zach. Said it before, didn't I? I'm sticking with it. Don't know how we would keep a clean sheet against Man City. Or 1-1, pens, something to mad at that. Realistically, we're probably going to get beat 3-1. But I'll be there for the live match reaction 10 minutes after the game. Stay tuned for that one. Drop your thoughts in the comment below. I want to hear your score predictions, your reaction, everything else we've talked about in this video as well. Just finally, Newcastle are going to travel to Dubai during this international break as well. Eddie Howe said in the press conference this morning. So probably set off next week I'd imagine since the players that aren't going to be on international duty can jet off and get some really nice warm hot sunshine so lucky them but hopefully some hard graft by the over there as well eh? get ready for that West Ham game which is absolutely massive on the 30th cheers everyone hope you have a great weekend enjoy your Paddy's day like I said match reaction tomorrow night so get involved and that will be live get your chats in and all that subscribe to the Magpie Channel TV I'll see you on the next one